It's uh, Jerry, G E R R Y. G G like Gerald, G E R R Y. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Last name Blair, B L A I R. And you're with Coconino County Sheriff. I am. Oh, what What's your title? Public Information Officer. Okay. Awesome. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Sure. So, what's your question? So, um, we we kind of heard word of mouth this morning that they thought they had found a place where the little boy had slept Friday night. Is that? We we found a place where someone slept. Uh, we can't say. Uh, with any certainty at this point that it was our missing child. Uh, we, found, uh, we found several things that could be related to him or, or maybe not. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, but we take all that into account and considering the fact that it may be related to him, we'll, co okay. I'm recording Sorry we'll, um, we'll concentrate our efforts in those areas, mm -hmm. um, but, in, but we really have no concrete things that we found yet that tells us, yes, this is definitely our child, and this is where he went. And so that's been real frustrating. Um, we've been at this since um, Thursday. Yeah. The child was reported missing to us at 5.30. He went missing around 2.30. Um, and uh, since that time, we've had intensive ground search operations with a lot of agencies involved, uh, as well as a pretty intensive daytime um, air search operations as well. And it says, at, at this point, and if, if you don't want to speak to this, that's okay, but as, at this point, is there any much hope of finding him? You know, and we, we don't like to do that. We don't like yeah. to put a percentage of survival on that. We know that it's possible that he is still alive and has survived. We're going under that premise. So everything we do is expedient, and we want to get it done quick and move on to another area. And we would like nothing more than to bring this child home alive to, the, to his parents. And that's our goal, is, is to unite him with his family. And so we're not even considering the possibility that he isn't alive at this point. Well, that's good. That and well, that's how it should be. I'm sorry, just adjusting my. So, um, so the the responder base has grown considerably even since yesterday. Huge, uh, and it's been huge since uh, I would say on. Um, uh, since Friday, actually, Friday, Saturday. Um, yeah, really. The family is from Colorado City. There's a huge base of support from Colorado City. Um, we probably, this is probably the biggest effort of spontaneous volunteers that we've ever coordinated. I would say today we probably had somewhere around 300 spontaneous volunteers from Colorado City come and help us. Mixed in with all the different agencies that are here, uh, the professional responders, the certified police officers, we probably had 500 people on foot in the field today. That's a massive search effort. We've had a lot of aircraft from the military with a lot of their specialty equipment um, trying to help us find them at night, uh, thermal imaging stuff, some, uh, some FLIR stuff, which is basically night vision equipment. And um, so this has been a 24-7 operation. Uh, just because the, the sun goes down doesn't mean we suspend operations. We're working through the night. Is there any suspicion of foul play of any kind you at know, this point? Whenever we have a missing child like this, we do two um, uh, basically parallel investigations. Mm -hmm. the, the big one is the search effort to try to recover the child. The second one is a criminal investigation to rule out the possibility of any foul play. Mm -hmm. At this point, we found no evidence of foul play. So that's, well, that's good. So, and obviously the search is ongoing as is the investigation. Uh, it's just heartbreaking for this. It's heartbreaking for the family. Um, it's heartbreaking for the rescuers. Like I said, they would like nothing more than to find the child alive and bring him home safely to his family. Um, so as the days go on, um, you see a little bit of frustration on people's faces, but you also see a lot of determination. A lot of them here are like here at five in the morning and we have to chase them out of here by 10 or 11 at night. So, you know, they need sleep too. But um, uh, the, the, um, the response has been overwhelming. Just about every county search and rescue unit in the state of Arizona has, is here being represented or has been represented. We have several out of state, including Washington state. We have several out of state units here. So it's, that's a real tight knit community, the search and rescue. And when somebody gets a big search like this, everybody comes out and helps. Wow. I, and I didn't, so, so now Arizona and uh, Utah, I knew, so you said Washington State, any other states that have been? No, I, it's uh, uh, primarily to two uh, states other than Arizona are Utah. We've had a big response from Kane County, oh, particularly, right. and, um, and then Washington State. They brought in about 20 folks in today, and they drove here. Wow. Well, and I know that um, there, there have been such a big response that you guys have had to tell people, hey, we'll call you if we need you. Yeah, and our philosophy is somebody shows up here, we're not going to send them home. 
uh, we're going to use them. But we're not putting out a cry to the public right now for more volunteers because, like I said, we're getting about 300 to 350 a morning. So we'll brief tomorrow morning at 6. There'll be a huge crowd of people here around 250, 300 that will be getting briefed, put out with some. Uh, and so the team leaders will be the professional responders. Mm -hmm. So we're not just sending people who are not trained out on, in the field by themselves. Because that's almost a liability if you've got... The, a, the average Joe coming up, then you don't need more people getting lost and having to... You're right, but we don't look at it so much as a liability as we do, you know, our job is to protect public safety. And so um, uh, one of the most important things on this, on this operation, number one, is to bring Gerald home alive. Number two is the safety of our rescuers, the safety of our volunteers. That's job one is safety. So we'd like to get through this thing with a 100% with a, a, a safety record where we don't injure anybody. Mm -hmm. And that, that's the goal. I've noticed um, dogs dogs here. There's, or have you, I saw horses. I don't know. Were, pe were people out on horseback too? We've had people on horseback and we've also had a number every day uh, from different units. Uh, in fact, uh, Cook County, County Sheriff's Office has two tracking dogs. Mm -hmm. uh, we've, so we've been using tracking dogs. We've also been using air scent dogs where we get an article of clothing uh, or something the child has used that has his, his scent on it. And so those are the air scent dogs that we've formed as well. So have there been any other, um, so I just making sure my focus is 